Welcome to lecture 1.6b, Mathematical Treatment of Measurement Results. This is part b of uh, two parts for section 1.6. I decided to break up section 1.6 into two lectures because uh, it is a little bit difficult. I found that uh, in teaching this that the students have uh, some challenges and I wanted to be thorough. So in part a we covered most of this text here and then we did a couple of examples rather painstakingly we went through the examples and so the rest of this uh, the rest of section 1.6 is really doing more examples so now we'll do example 1.10 Computing quantities from measurement results in known mathematical relations. While being driven from Philadelphia to Atlanta, a distance of 1,250 kilometers, a 2014 Lamborghini Aventador Roadster uses 213 liters gasoline. What average fuel economy in miles per gallon did the Roadster get this trip? If gasoline costs $3 80 per gallon, what was the fuel cost for this trip? This is not trivial, you have to think about it and thankfully they provided a solution. So A, first convert distance from kilometers to miles because we want to find out the uh, what average fuel economy in miles per gallon did the Roadster get during this trip? I should point out this is kind of a good strategy if you can just try to do a little bit of the conversions uh, parts of it that's a good start so first convert distance from kilometers to miles and to do that we have this conversion factor here that 0.62137 miles is equal to one kilometer. Let's look at table 1.6 and see how that was put together. Okay, so distance one kilometer equals 0.62137 miles. So again, if the desired unit is in miles, then put miles in the numerator and the other value and kilometers in the denominator. And so the distance traveled was 1,250 kilometers and they did the calculation for us here. I should mention again just for completeness when it says one kilometer if it's a conversion factor uh, the significant digits really are the significant digits here, there are actually five significant digits in this entire conversion factor. So even though you only see one significant figure in the denominator, denominator, since this is a conversion factor, just think of it as really being five significant digits. That's just a subtlety. It would have been more, um, if someone were persnickety, it might, would have been better to say 1.0000000 kilometers just to be exact and we see that we have at least three significant figures here and so they use three significant figures in the result so I'm just pointing that out for completeness I'd like to point out something that uh, I, I felt was an oversight in the textbook in OpenStax it didn't talk a lot about what a dimension is. I'll point the viewers to a Wikipedia article on dimensional analysis. Now what I'm about to read is um, a little bit thick, but I'm going to try to apply it so you could see what I'm trying to say. So there is a Wikipedia article on dimensional analysis and it says commensurable phys physical quantities are of the same kind and have the same dimension 
and can be directly compared to each other, even if they are originally, originally expressed in differing units of measure, e.g. yards and meters, pound, uh, pounds, mass, and kilograms, seconds and years. Incommensurable physical quantities are of different kinds and have different dimensions and cannot be directly compared to each other no matter what units they are originally expressed in e.g. meters and kilograms seconds and kilograms meters and seconds for example asking whether a kilogram is larger than an hour is meaningless so uh, I felt it was kind of unfortunate they didn't define dimensions so uh, dimension refers to a, uh, to a physical quantity a physical quantity so uh, quantities expressed in kilometers or miles are really the same physical dimension they are just expressed in different units of measure and let me just again go back to that Commensurable physical quantities are of the same kind and have the same dimension and can be compared directly and can be directly compared to each other even if they are even if they are originally expressed in differing units of measure. So miles and kilometers are in the same dimension, but they are expressed in differing units of measure. So that's part of dimensional analysis. So going back to our example, uh, we want to express fuel economy in miles per gallon. So the first thing is we convert the, the, the distance into miles. The original distance was expressed in kilometers. We ex express it in miles and we can do that conversion because miles and kilometers are only differing units of measure in the same dimension which is the dimension of length or distance and see then convert the volume from liters to gallons so the original the original amount of fuel is expressed in liters I will point out word problems are not easy to, to to, to translate into equations. This, this is an art. But anyway, we saw here that there is 213 liters of gasoline here. And so let's convert 213 liters of gasoline. So we'll convert 213. Oh good, I can color some of these things. 213 liters of gasoline and convert it into gallons. Now, there is a way to do this. Maybe a more straightforward way is just look up on Google and find out uh, converting liters to gallons. But since table 1.6 has only expressions in terms of quarts and liters and gallons and quarts, let me verify that. Actually, they don't even have uh, the fact that there are four quarts in a gallon. So, that was an omission there that they didn't have that in table one point. Uh, in the table 1.6 so let me just verify that that was table 1.6 yeah table 1. Point, they didn't have that so you just had to know that which is kind of unfortunate but so let's go ahead and do this conversion we know that there are 1.0567 quarts per liter and again if the final thing you want is um, gonna be like say in gallons Put that in in the numerator and then just find something that you can put in the denominator. If you don't have the immediate quantity here, like say in liters, find, uh, find another relation uh, 
that might be able to help you uh, convert, um, uh, relate the quartz, like say in this case the quantity quartz in the, in the denominator with another quantity, like say the original quantity, I mean the original measure, like say in liters. So that's just a, a little tricky. Sometimes you may not get just a simple one-step conversion factor. You might need several conversion factors to be able to get the value you want. So um, you, you could see, and I guess, I mean, some of you just know this intuitively, but I, I found when I teach this, this is a little bit challenging. Uh, if, the, if the unit of measure that you're aiming for is um, a gallon, make sure you have a conversion factor with gallons in the numerator. And then the trick is finding what to put in the denominator. If you don't have, um, uh, the, ideally, the figure you put in the denominator is the, the unit of measure that was originally used in, 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 the, in the problem. But if it's not that, then you have to find another unit that might help you relate it to the original unit stated. So uh, I'm just stating that there. So anyway, let's move forward. Uh, again, practice will help you understand this. At some point, uh, it'll just be intuitive like riding a bicycle. It's, it's actually a little bit harder to actually describe the process. It's easier to actually just practice the problems and do it. And there are some checks and balances, so to speak, because if you get the wrong uh, unit after you do the calculation, then uh, the equation was set up wrong to begin with, and just go back and correct it. So finally, the average mileage then is we take the, the mileage in terms of miles per gallon is you take the number of miles and divide it by gallons. Now, Again, dimensional analysis. Miles and gallons are, using Wikipedia's terminology, are incommensurable physical quantities. They're incommensurable because there's no way you can say 777 miles is greater than 56.3 gallons or vice versa. So that's how you sort of know that they're incommensurable physical quantities and therefore they're in different dimensions. So there's the distance dimension expressed in miles and then the volume dimension expressed in gallons. So the average mileage is 13.8 miles per gallon. So average, uh, uh, Let me see if they pointed out that the average miles per gallon. Um, so if mileage is expressed in miles per gallon uh, uh, then you know how to set up this this, this ratio. I mean, by the way, if someone said, what's the average mileage, unless they had kind of helped me along and told me that it's supposed to be expressed in miles per gallon, I, I might not have known that offhand. I, I'd have to think about it or look it up. Alternatively, the calculation could be set up in a way that uses all the conversion factors sequentially as follows. And I want to point out, this is customarily how it's taught in some of the older chemistry text. I'm glad they're trying to break it down because this this could be this could be challenging and let me just again suggest the commensurable and the incommensurable dimensions. The commensurable dimensions are these here. That's not what I wanted to do. So the commensurable dimensions are no that's that's wrong. Check that. I didn't like the way they did this. Um, we want to convert kilometers per liter. So just just strike what I <laughs> the last minute of what I said. So we do have we could express the average mileage in terms of kilometers per liter. And we can, con we can put a conversion factor to convert the kilometers into miles. And then a conversion factor, you actually need two to convert the liters 
I'm sorry about that. This is not letting me highlight the nice way. Um, these two conversion factors help us convert liters to gallons. And what is difficult here is because if you have liters in the denominator here and you want to convert, one wants to have the conversion factor also in the, in the denominator, you have to put the desired result in the, uh, the desired unit in the denominator somewhere. So that's, that's a real subtlety. And that will actually just, that'll take practice to learn how to do that. So I recommend that try to do the single one, kind of the single, uh, the simpler, the simpler conversions that are uh, involving only one dimension. Once you get into multiple dimensions, it's going to be it's going to be challenging to get everything canceled out. So using uh, the previously calculated volume in gallons. And it wanted to have, okay, so B said, if gasoline costs $3.80 per gallon, what is the fuel cost for this trip? So the cost is $3.80 per gallon. Again, these are incommensurable physical quantities or even conceptual. $3.80 is really kind of a conceptual thing. It's money. $3.80 per gallon and then we have 56.3 gallons. We just multiply these two and we, we get $214. And is that a conversion factor? No, that's not, this is not really, this is not a conversion factor. This is not a conversion factor. I just need to point that out. This is a conversion factor, this is not. Why? because money is not the same as volume. These are incommensurable units. Just kind of keep that in, my, in the back of your mind. Uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, th this is a little tricky and there are a few subtleties in the text here that they don't cover. So now we have, <laughs> now we're gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to do this on my own here. Uh, and we'll just try to see what answer we get. So let's get right to it. First I'll read the first I'll read the the problem and we'll try to break it down and try to solve it. They've already provided the answer so we can check if our answer is correct. A Toyota Prius hybrid uses 59.7 liters gasoline to drive from San Francisco to Seattle, a distance of 1,300 kilometers, two significant digits. A, what average fuel economy in miles per gallon did the Prius get during this trip? B, if gasoline costs $3.90 per gallon, what was the fuel cost for this trip? What I'm going to do is I will show first conceptually there, there's something that's assumed that needs to be probably described. Uh, it, it's sort of assumed but it's worth just reviewing. Average fuel economy for a trip. Average fuel economy for a trip is Distance traveled divided by the volume of gas consumed. It is distance traveled divided by the volume of gas consumed. For those that do drive around, you'll notice that there are some trips that, uh, for the same amount of miles, seem cheaper than other trips that are about the same amount of miles. Uh, because one one route will have just highways and hardly any stop and go and another route will have lots of stop and go. So the average fuel economy for a trip is you take the distance traveled divided by the volume of gas consumed. Now I'm being very 
verbose here just to describe the details this, this will be important so we can calculate the average fuel economy in various units we can calculate the average fuel economy in kilometers traveled per liters of gas consumed so that's still distance um, divided by uh, volume of gas consumed and I took the liberty of color trying to color code a little bit of the concepts so similar concepts are in the same color we can also describe average fuel economy in miles traveled divided by gallons of gas consumed and we can also do other varieties things like miles traveled per liters of gas consumed or kilometers per gallons of gas consumed but we'll focus on this one first kilometers traveled per liters of gas consumed and I'll point out why I'm doing this first let's just try to solve uh, let's just try to get the correct answer in kilometers per liters of gas consumed the answer for average fuel economy then we'll do the conversion later I think this is this is an alternative approach to trying to just start doing conversions right away it's it's better to try to get in some cases it, it might be better to try to get the answer in whatever units you have available and then do the conversion later uh, there are all uh, there's more than one way way to do this but I hope this will be helpful so let's try to do that we have the given the Toyota Prius uses 59.7 liters gasoline to drive from San Francisco to Seattle a distance of 1300 kilometers to two significant digits I've taken the liberty to color code the relationships here so this is 57 liters of gas consumed and 13 kilometers is the distance traveled and I'm just gonna highlight that you could see the connection there I'm just showing where I'm gonna fill in the uh, blanks so to speak and it's not too difficult actually that's a slight mistake that should be 59.7 apologies let me see if I can correct that uh, apologies to the readers so that should be let me see if I can affect a, a uh, correction here on the fly there okay great it's corrected uh, uh, let me just express uh, gratitude to the readers for their forbearance for my mistakes and let me let me just shrink the font a little bit here so that it will fit there okay so let's move on and um, so I'm going to use a shorthand here just so it's a little less cluttered but I need to point out when I take this shorthand I'll point this out at the end of this lecture segment and by the way I decided to have a third segment 1.6 C because this is going to drag on and this is actually a, a very difficult section I'm having to divide it up not just to two parts but to three what I wanted to mention here is at the end you'll see that this shorthand hat you have to be careful when we use this shorthand you can end up canceling things you shouldn't uh, and, and 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 so just just uh, take a note kind of a place marker a mental place marker and say we'll revisit this issue of the shorthand and why you have to be careful so I'm just taking the numbers here and it's actually pretty easy at this point we get approximately to two significant figures 22 kilometers per liter hopefully that's easy so at least we got the average fuel economy in kilometers per liter we still don't have it in miles per gallon which we'll do what I'm gonna suggest again I'm suggesting one way to do this is after getting an answer using the given units that is kilometers per, per liter then do a conversion to desired units 
So the given units are in liters and kilometers, and now we uh, want to do a conversion to desired units. So now let's go back to the original problem. And I'm going to show some relations here. Everything in purple is referring to, uh, to the volume of gas consumed. Everything in purple is referring to the volume of gas consumed and the various units associated. So a liter and a gallon are commensurable units. And for the reader's benefit, there is a Wikipedia article on there is a Wikipedia article on dimensional analysis. Just look that up and it will talk about what commensurable units are. So liters and gallons measure volume. They're just different uh, units of measure, but they're measuring the same dimension, namely volume and specifically volume of gasoline consumed. Volume of gasoline consumed. In like manner, kilometers and miles are commensurable units. They measure distance traveled. Uh, they just use different units. And so what I'm trying to show here is the distance traveled divided by volume gas consumed, it can be expressed in kilometers per liter or miles per gallon. Again, I'm just, uh, I just said it in shorthand there. And again, I'm just uh, highlighting. So, so we have the commensurable units there, liters and gallons and kilometers and miles. That tells you what sort of conversion factors you'll will be using. So moving forward, uh, as before, we had, we, we filled in the blanks here. We already did this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to convert this to miles per gallon. There it is, convert to miles per gallon. To do that, we use two conversion factors. So to convert, first we're going to convert the kilometers to miles. And if we want miles in the numerator, we put the conversion factor that has miles in the numerator. And again, I'm, I'm using the color coding here to show commensurable units. Kilometers and kilometers are commensurable with each other, and kilometers and miles are commensurable with each other. I'm just grouping this together. Same with liters and gallons. So if we want gallons to be in the denominator, as it is here. So we want miles, the unit of miles in the numerator and gallons in the denominator. If we want gallons in the denominator, we use a conversion factor where gallons is in the denominator. So we're converting um, liters to gallons and we're converting kilometers to miles. And if you end up getting things reversed, like interchanging the numerator and denominator, uh, you'll get the wrong cancellations. It'll sort of um, help show that you just had thing, you just had the interchange the numerator and denominator that's easily fixed. Just reverse it if you made a mistake. So I'm just showing what will cancel. The kilometers were canceled, so I highlighted those in, re highlighted those in red. The liters will cancel. I highlighted those in yellow. So all this will cancel. And we end up, after we do the calculation and pump it through uh, the calculator or spreadsheet. I'm not showing the spreadsheet this time. Uh, however, you calculate that number. And it will be miles per gallon. And to two significant figures, it's uh, 51 miles per gallon. I should point out now I dropped the coloring here because the answers are pretty much just in black and white. The coloring is just to help conceptualize what's going on. And checking the answer in the answer key, it is 51 miles per gallon. So we get a good grade for that. Yay. Now let's go to 
The second part of the problem. If gasoline costs $3.90 per gallon, what was the fuel cost for this trip? So let's try to answer that question. Uh, so this is just restating the problem. Uh, a Toyota Prius hybrid uses 59.7 liters gasoline to drive from San Francisco to Seattle, a distance of 1,300 kilometers to significant digits. Gasoline costs $3.90 per gallon. What is the fuel cost for this trip? So again, I highlight the two commensurable units, liters and gallons. And so we're going to calculate. By the way, I'm going to highlight the money in green. And so we'll just start out by just stating 59.7 liters. Since the cost is expressed in dollars per gallon, it makes sense to convert <clears throat> 59.7 liters into gallons. And hopefully it should be getting easier to do that. To do this conversion, and again I'm color coding all the commensurable units, liters, liters, and gallons are all commensurable. If, if we want the number of gallons to be the result, we put gallons in the numerator in the conversion factor. And uh, I'm just showing here, uh, kind of just trying to emphasize again, we're trying to get gallons, so we use the conversion factor with the gallons in the numerator. And we just carry out the computation. The, uh, the liters will cancel and we'll get this number that has lots of digits after the decimal point. We'll do the proper rounding to the significant digits after we after we follow through with the the complete answer. I just wanted to say, <clears throat> uh, you'll see me doing calculations where we do all the conversions and we do rounding at the last moment. I don't round the in, uh, intermediate steps. I don't know what the preference is of some other professors, but it just follows naturally if you're using a spreadsheet that you just round off the answers at the very end. I think that's also more correct because uh, otherwise, uh, errors could propagate if you keep truncating or rounding um, early on. That's just my feeling. If someone out there has serious objections, please post them in the comment section. So let's proceed. Now I'm just going to point out this this calculation here rather than using this intermediate result of 15.7710 gallons. I'm just going to restate the original result, the original um, um, the, the original formula before it got computed out. Uh, just so I can uh, do a little bit more computation here uh, where I saved the rounding to the very last end, to, to the le very last uh, step. And again, this $3.90 per gallon, I'm expressing that here. So just as a note, if you're throwing conversion factors that we've established either through the problem or through uh, some known conversion, if you end up with the wrong units after you do all the algebra, then the problem was set up wrong to begin with and usually it's easily it, it, it's very easily correctable just uh, um, try to put other conversion factors and um, if they're uh, inverted with respect to the numerator and denominator just interchange them it's not it shouldn't be that hard so let's just proceed and I'm going through this in painful detail just to help um, some of the students out because I, when I've tutored, this was the real hang-up. One of the biggest hang-ups was this. And uh, the gallons, I highlight, they, they will cancel. The liters will cancel. We pump through the numbers, and we get $61.50.5071 and 50, uh, and 50, uh, .5071, 61.5071 with numbers after the decimal place, dollars. 
and when we, when we round to two significant digits it's sixty two dollars and checking the answer key we got that right so that's the basics now I'm gonna issue there's some really smart people out there and they may overthink this and uh, it could get uh, I would sympathize with this mistake it's an understandable mistake and I'm just gonna try to deal with it now remember a leader is shorthand for leader when, when I say L in this problem not in any other problem except this problem L is shorthand for leader of gasoline it's not just a plain old leader okay. if you don't account for that one can make the mistake of saying one liter equals 10 to the third meters cubed and and remember I said just file away or place a place marker on the problem of shorthands uh, so, so remember uh, L is not really 10 to, to the minus third meters cubed in this case it is 10 to the minus third meters cubed of gasoline consumed but if we forget that this is shorthand and we take it too uh, literally we could conclude then we could substitute 10 to the minus third meters cubed for a liter and let's see what happens when we do that so when we say kilometers per liter remember we were doing average uh, fuel economy expressed in kilometers per liter but it's really kilometers traveled per liters of gas consumed but if we take the shorthand too literally and don't realize that it is a shorthand we could do something like this we say oh kilometer per liter a kilometer per 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters um, that's also equal to a thousand meters uh, divided by 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed and we grind through the algebra we end up 10 to the 6 power divided by meters squared and it's like what's that we wanted kilometers per liter and we end up getting a strange unit like that and that's wrong and I was just pointing out if, if you're careful hopefully this problem won't arise but I'm saying though I'm pointing this out because as one gets into sophisticated more sophisticated conversions it may be uh, it may not be so obvious that we're not dealing with um, uh, to think we're dealing with somewhat commensurable units when we're not so the thing is uh, these are not commensurable units we're dealing with kilometers as a measure of distance travels and liters of gasoline a kilometer of distance travel is not commensurable with liters of gasoline and because of that uh, this sort of conversion won't work however I see it in physics a lot where we will have these uh, some of these partial dimensions will cancel so this one has three dimensions of space this one has one dimension of space a meter is one dimension meter cube is three dimensions and sometimes you'll get cancellations and that's perfectly legitimate in certain problems of physics if we are dealing with purely spatial dimensions but if we're dealing with dimensions that involve like say real substances versus a concept like distance traveled uh, we have to be careful so so just file that away it, it's rare that you'll encounter this uh, for a lot of the chemistry you do but I just needed to point that out uh, be careful not to go down that road so one will realize one will get realize one will get fuel economy fuel economy in terms of kilometers of distance traveled per liter of gasoline or um, meters distance travel meters of distance traveled versus cubic meters of gasoline and then the M in the numerator uh, is prevented from getting canceled by part of the M cubed in the denominator distance traveled is incommensurable to volume of gasoline they are different dimensions so that's just a, a warning hopefully you never encounter it but uh, at least in chemistry but uh, these considerations may come up in in physics so I'm just pointing that out as I said this is extremely difficult material for some 
and because it's very mathy and there's a lot of word problem conversion converting word problems into equations is not uh, it, it, it's there's part of it that is a little bit of an art and it, it, it's fraught with a little bit of um, confusion factors so to speak so that's why I'm spending more time on it so with that this will be the end of um, 1.6b I was going to continue on but I'm just going to break this up and uh, continue in uh, lecture 1.6c that will deal with the rest of this section so thank you very much for joining us and it's been a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you all again <laughs>